idea. Let's approach him slowly without alarming him. Wait. You're... He can't speak, and his eyes are unfocused. But he looks too young to be anyone's grandfather. Also, why is he the only one here? Didn't expect to see him here. You know him? He's Razak, a senior of mine at the Academia. He's a scholar too? Is he the kind that holds up in a forest and mumbles stuff about training? No. And that's the problem. Razak was never involved in any of those things. He never trained in the forest, let alone reached Satyavada life. Leaving that question aside for the moment, him being here alone means that we might be too late. Looks like they've already taken everyone away. For whatever reason, they left Razak here. Perhaps they simply didn't have time to come back for him. Hmm. There are drag marks on the ground. They're clearer by the doorway. Someone was forcefully drawing a cart that was loaded with something heavy. Loaded? With... people? That is one possibility. Hmm. It looks like they were in a hurry, as if they were afraid of being caught. In their haste, they failed to notice Razak hiding in a corner. The symptoms are identical. Looks like we found living proof. Huh? Why do you say that? Allow me to jog your memory. Recall your time at Port Ormos. Don't you think his symptoms look familiar? Correct. The Academia is behind all of this. It isn't difficult to deduce their rationale. First, the Academia spread a false rumor of the Scarlet King's resurrection, emphasizing the role of the village keepers, the mad scholars who were exiled to Aru village. These rumors were all the persuasion that the radicals needed, and those based in Aru village leapt into action. Unbeknownst to them, of course, through rounding up the scholars, they were actually helping the academia. As well as being able to exploit the radicals for their own ends, this scheme has one further advantage to the academia. All the risks and responsibilities are offloaded onto the Scarlet King's followers. Life for the Desert Dwellers has been brutal ever since the Scarlet King's death all those years ago. Beneath the surface, feelings of desperation are widespread. Many would give everything they have for the prospect of something better. Anyone looking to exploit that for their own ends simply needs to make a few empty promises. Even if complications arise, people will see that those involved are all followers of the Scarlet King and look for no further explanation than differences of belief. A deep-seated mistrust of the desert and everyone in it by the rest of Sumeru will make sure of that. The notion of an academia plot wouldn't even cross their minds. It may seem like a simple strategy, but it is able to work wonders under Sumeru's current circumstances. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's in line with the village chief's theory, too. But there's still one very important question. Wasn't it the academia that brought the scholars to Aru village in the first place? Why does it want them back now? Throughout this process, one thing has changed. The scholars' identity. First, they were scholars. Then, they became lunatics. After that, they were exiles. And finally, they become missing persons. An exile is still patently a living, breathing human being. But when someone becomes a missing person, that is brought into question. If you can't find someone, you have no way of knowing what exactly happened to them. That makes missing people an ideal resource. 
Resource? For what exactly? One possibility is that the information in their brains could be extracted into knowledge capsules. Extracted? You mean, canned knowledge comes from people's brains? With the technology of the Sumeru Academia, it's entirely possible. Perhaps the process caused them great suffering, which is why they cry out in the dead of night when no one is watching them. So, the human brain... I'm the Academia Scribe, after all. I'm familiar with their projects. Anyway, judging by Razak's state, the contents of a divine knowledge capsule were extracted from his mind. But something went wrong in the process. Or perhaps his curiosity got the better of him, and he used such a capsule for himself. Uh, Hyman's a little confused. Can they just use anyone's brain? The look on your face tells me you've realized the answer. That's right. To some scholars, gaining knowledge about the gods is their entire life's pursuit. Extracting canned knowledge is just one of the extreme measures they turn to. However, I can't help but wonder. What do they seek to gain from divine knowledge? The academia is going out of their way to look for forbidden knowledge. But what is their ultimate goal? I've spent quite some time trying to analyze the contents of the Divine Knowledge Capsule, but to no avail. It seems like my way of thinking is too different from theirs. You mean, you're not even slightly interested in getting your hands on this forbidden stuff? All scholars seek to expand the horizons of knowledge, but I'm not particularly interested in gods, so I don't share their degree of zealotry. Extracting information from people as if they were lifeless objects? <laughs> if this is the direction of academic progress, then the academia may as well shut its doors. Sounds like you're really against all this. Of course. The academia's actions run contrary to their rules. Whether it be academics or knowledge, everything has its boundaries. If those lines are crossed, the rules and order that govern everything in the world will be destroyed. This matter needs to be corrected, just like fixing a typo in a book. Wait, didn't you step in to help because you felt sympathy for those poor people? Not to be callous, but no. My criteria are a little more restrictive than that. There is no shortage of suffering in Sumeru, and the same can be said for the rest of Tevat as well. What do you plan to do about that? Save every last person? Um, probably not. Uh, Paimon's not sure. You can say that. Simply put, I don't blindly place my faith into strength or heroism. I do what I want. The Divine Knowledge Capsule is something I want to investigate in full. That doesn't mean I'm willing to take action for the sake of a few strangers. for a while. There are a lot of bad guys in the academia, but you're not one of them. You're their weirdo. <laughs> you're probably right. Though I must say, I quite enjoy this feeling of being the odd one out. Uniqueness is also an asset, is it not? Wow, that's a great way to think about it. Paimon's really impressed. If only Miss Shani had a similar mindset, her life would definitely be a lot easier. I'm just a more likable person than her in general. There's nothing more to it than that. <sighs> he won't last long if we leave him here. Let's take him with us. We'll work out our next step after we return to Aru Village.